Today I'm going through exercise 1.22 from the Art of Electronics and in this exercise we need to design a symmetrical clamp. A symmetrical clamp is a circuit that confines the input signal to a specific range. In this case we need to design a circuit that clamps the voltage to minus 5.6 volts and plus 5.6 volts. These sorts of circuits are useful for over voltage protection and signal conditioning. So let's get started. If you've been reading section 1.6.6 from the Art of Electronics, there have been a number of circuits described using diodes that can be used as clamping circuits. So this is what we're going to do for our circuit. So let me build up a model of a diode clamp circuit and then I will explain how that will work. So a symmetrical clamp can be designed using diodes. So this is the first thing I'm going to do on LT Spice. I'm going to set up a simulation circuit that can give us an input voltage that's above 5.6 volts. So you can see now I've got my diode clamp circuit designed on LT Spice. Now how this circuit will work is let's say we have a positive 15 volts input on this line here. So I'm going to call this node Vn for clarity and then call this node V clamp. So if we have 15 volts here Without the diodes, we would get 15 volts here, assuming a very large load resistor here. The diodes in place, let's say this voltage is 15 volts. What happens is, uh, when this voltage starts getting to uh, 5 volts, which is over here, plus the diode voltage, the diode will be in forward conduction and we'll start conducting current this way. And we can see that with the simulation. So in the positive case, when the voltage on this node over here is above 5.6, what you have is this diode not conducting and this diode creating a short path towards the positive rail. Obviously this diode is having very little effect at that point as it is reverse biased. So there will be some leakage current going down here and obviously you can check data sheets of specific components to see what that leakage current is. Now let's look at the second scenario when the input voltage is going negative. So let's say we have minus 15 volts here. So minus 15 volts here means we'll have, without the diode, minus 15 volts here approximately with a very large load again. But if we start getting voltage that's lower than 5.6, so that's the negative 5 volt rail plus the diode voltage, which is 0.6 approximately. We basically get this diode being conductive or it is starting to activate. So what happens is this diode creates a short path towards the negative rail and you get the extra leakage current or you get the current going down this path. The end result is that for the negative and positive parts of the input cycle, we get our voltage clamped to plus and minus 5.6 volts approximately. Obviously in this case it's 0.7 because 
L2 Spice is using slightly different models to what's been suggested in the book. We can change the clamping voltages by changing the types of diodes that we're using. So if we were to use a shop key diode in this application, we should expect to see lower clamping voltage. So now if I look at the clamping voltage on this circuit with the shock key diode in place, you can see the clamping voltage has gone down to 5.2 volts. So the shock key diode is conducting very quickly. However, every circuit type has its disadvantages because uh, generally I think shock key diodes can have a higher leakage current. So the diode that is not conducting, basically when it's reverse bias, will be um, wasting power for the circuit. So general purpose PN diodes might be better. Obviously during the conduction phase, um, you want to try and maintain a low power dissipation across the diodes. So let's now switch back to normal silicon diodes and I'll show you what I mean. So now let's think about the scenario with um, the 15 pos volts positive input signal on here. So we can redraw this circuit basically with a power supply that's 15 volts Then we have a series 1k resistor and then we have a diode and that is going to a 5 volt power supply. Now if you look at this circuit here, you have a Output signal is connected to this node over here, so that's between the diode and the 1K resistor. So our output node is over here. Now if we simulate this circuit, we should get the same result as before, as it is the same circuit. So we've got 5.713 volts here, so using the same diode, let's say IN914. We can see the voltage is clamped to 5.69 volts. And over here, you can see the voltage is also clamped to 5.69 volts. So obviously this circuit represents or is exactly the same as the positive portion of what I was showing you here. So now let's look at the power dissipation. So we've got 15 volts coming in from here and then we've got 5 volts here. So the total voltage drop across the two components here is 10 volts. So you got 15 minus 5. Obviously now we know that the voltage drop across the diode is going to be roughly 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. So then the voltage drop across the 1K resistor is going to be 10 volts minus the 0.7 volts. So let's say 9.3 volts. From there, we can calculate the current that's going through this path and then calculate the power dissipation of the diode and the resistor. So if you are designing this circuit in real life, the number of things that you want to make sure is that your resistor is rated to the power dissipation for the protection that you're trying to achieve. So obviously in, in, in a real life scenario, you wouldn't have 15 volts here you might be trying to protect against ESD strikes, which are very fast 
short-lived but very high voltage um, events. So you want to ensure that the power dissipation of, of the resistor can meet the, the event that you're trying to protect the microcontroller against. If the circuit is intended for signal conditioning and you just want to clamp some voltage from a sensor, let's say, um, to not go above a analog channel reference voltage, then obviously the power dissipations are going to be a little bit lower, but you still need to take those into consideration for the resistor and the diode. The purpose of this 1K resistor over here, which you can change the value on this depending on your needs, is to protect the diode and also protect anything that's over here. And it does this by re restricting the current that can flow in this direction. So obviously if, you, if this goes in forward conduction or this goes in forward conduction, the current that can flow through this circuit is limited by the 1K resistor. In the first solution, we used a negative 5 volt rail and a positive 5 volt rail to achieve the circuit behavior that was requested from the question. Obviously, this is not always possible um, as sometimes we only have 0 and 5 volts. We can design a circuit that comes close to meeting the requirements of the question by using just the positive and a zero volt rail. So I'm going to draw the circuit out now and then I will explain to you how it works. As you can see on the screen, we can achieve similar results using only a single rail. So we got 5 volts and ground. In this case, I'm using a 4.7 volt uh, Zener diode. However, a 4.9 volt Zener diode would be slightly closer to what we need to achieve the 5.6 volts uh, plus and minus clamping. We have Similar to last time, we have a plus or minus 15 volt input signal. And you can see the output signal is clamped to positive 5.7 volts and negative uh, 5.37 volts. So what I've got here and how this works is the, the positive direction is exactly the same as the previous circuit. However, I've, I have added a Zener diode in the circuit. So when this net voltage is negative, 15 volts, or anything below minus 5.5 volts, what happens is basically this diode or this uh, Zener diode starts conducting um, in this direction. So it's in breakdown mode and this diode is forward biased. So we get conduction through this path when this point is below 5 point, uh, in this case, 5.37 volts. So that's the diode voltage drop this plus this, and we get the clamping voltage from those two uh, components. Obviously, if you have a single volt rail, you probably want to clamp to uh, minus 0 0.7 volts anyway. So what I would um, do in a circuit where I've just got a single volt rail and um, I want to protect let's say a microcontroller input um, I would basically just put down a diode in this direction and that clamps my negative voltage to minus 700 millivolts approximately and obviously this is not part of the question anymore but I would also um, add in some capacitors 
and this can really help to protect or reduce the levels that appear on the diodes as well. That's all I have to share with you today. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below.